Welcome to Awesome Cast number 94. I'm Sorg down here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. We got a great show lined up for you. We got we got somebody back. He's back. We lost Chachi in, in the trade-off. In getting in getting Rob back from South by Southwest. He survived. How you doing, Rob? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> And hey, you got a lot to tell us about, so uh, we'll get into that in a minute here. Uh, but with us on the couch is where find his button. All right, that's, well, that's not, not me. The... I'm still not Chilla. <laughs> There's Chilla. John should Chilla. How's it going? Back again to with his with the shiny. He's got a shiny with us. It's it's pretty. It is pretty. <laughs> and I don't understand the overheating thing, but we'll get to that. Well, have you been playing Infinity Blade? But no. I there you haven't. go. There you go. Well, first, let's get to uh, what. Well, hey, uh, if you want to contact us here on the Awesome Cast, we want to hear from you. You can hit us on Twitter uh, at Awesome Cast. You can hit us email contact at awesomecast.com or drop it on our Facebook or our Google Plus page. There's been a lot of conversations going on lately over at Google Plus. Um, so props to Matt and uh, and everybody else over there. And uh, so so let's let's get into uh, Rob. Uh, you've been a well traveled man and a well publicized man. Of the last few weeks, at least your a lot of your work has. Yeah, it's been uh, it's it's definitely I'd say for the year and a half or whatever that I've been doing trade shows and exhibits and stuff like that. It was probably the most fun I've ever had at a show, and it's the only show I've ever been to where I was like, man, I need to come back, even if I don't get paid to come back. I'm definitely coming back. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, so I was there. Now I can reveal all the secrets that I was mumbling about for the last month and a half or so. Mm. I was there working for PepsiCo. Um, so PepsiCo hired a, a large, big, like exhibit interactive type company that hired another local company, uh, Maya design in Pittsburgh. And they do mostly software interactive type stuff. And they, um, they knew about my company, Ion Tank. They knew about what we did, and they knew that we did the ridiculous uh, exhibit trade show type physical things, as well as all the technical gadgetry to make the weird stuff work. So they hired us to put together um, two main aspects for the PepsiCo Central Station, is what they called it, at South by Southwest. One of which was a 24-foot wide by 16-foot tall uh, video wall which was comprised of 12 55 inch monitors and seven Mac minis and a row of flip dots, which are, um, if you look at any of the pictures, which I assume Michael Sorg is capable of showing at some point. We're now. pushing the video right now. Okay. Uh, at the very top of that wall, there is, it usually says like PepsiCo central station, or in some of the videos you'll find, you'll see like a little Pac-Man coming across the top. And those are actually little, um, maybe one inch, uh, diameter flip dots, which are electromagnets with little like hand spun coils, and it's controlled by a serial controller and then a little bit of code and a Mac Mini. So we can make each individual dot, of which there are uh, in that configuration probably a few thousand, uh, flip in different um, orientations of black or white. You usually see them in like traffic signs in other countries or in like they're, they're the old fashioned LED signs, what those are. Uh, and then the video wall. So the video wall. Uh, has a whole bunch of content on it that uh, Ion Tank did all the software for as far as um, uh, aggregating all that content um, and scheduling it for the wall. So we have like different sizes of slides and things that we could push to a wall, whether it would fill the entire 24 foot wide wall or be like a, a one by two or a one by three or a two by four. Uh, and that would be Flickr, Facebook, uh, not Facebook. Actually, we didn't do any Facebook at all. Flickr, Twitter, um, I put some Instagram stuff up on there, um, just general social media stuff, as well as statistics that were from the show. So this is a big parfait of, of complex Pittsburgh companies here. So in this mess somewhere, we also worked with, uh, Maya rather, worked with LiveScribe. They make that little pen where you can write on a pad of paper and it basically records what you wrote for syncing to a device later. Uh, they worked with LiveScribe to put together these books, which were given out to 14 reporters. And in these books had questions like, look around in the room right now and tap the pen for every beard that you see. And so they go tap, 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 tap. And then at the end of the day, they would come to uh, PepsiCo Central Station, plug in their little device, and uh, sync all that data. And that data would go to another local company that was there with us called Ryza. They do data analyst analytics and visualization, that kind of stuff. 
and they would build statistics off of these numbers, pass that info to us, we would schedule it, put it up on the, on the giant wall. So all the silly statistics that you would see up on the wall, like uh, the libido meter and stuff like that, it was all legitimate statistics for the show at that given time. Like, as old as that info could have been would be maybe five hours. So, like, we're seeing paper, plastic... Um, no, actually, this looks like more of a water impact uh, kind of thing that there's going on. Yeah, there's also a lot of, um, obviously, Pepsi uh, brand graphics as far as, like, mm -hmm. what they're trying to communicate for. Because Pepsi's doing a lot of, they're pushing in a lot of different directions to try and gain brand attention. So they're trying to do more natural food stuff. They're trying to do more saving the environment type stuff. Hey, so you have Foursquare up on, on the video that we're showing here. Yeah, four square check-ins. We're um, all up clean, on clean faces. Whoever's in the house, the number, and haikus. Apparently, uh, yes, we did. We did have a few haikus, which was funny. So we had we had to demo this thing in the studio. I had that entire wall assembled in the studio, um, mm -hmm. give or take ten feet in height, and um, we had some haikus up just as like a way to test the way that those are displayed because we originally had it as the big flip panels like virtual flip panels that you see rendered there and then we're like well maybe we can make them smaller and just put text up which you ended up using for a lot of things but as a test for that we had the haiku and we're like oh it's just a, a throwaway thing they're not going to actually use it and then the um i think it was the first day that the show was actually active uh a representative from pepsico came it's called back of house where we keep all of our servers and all of our gear and they said hey uh so one of the pepsi reps is here and they they really like the haiku thing, and so she wrote a bunch of Pepsi-related haikus for you to put up on the board. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay. Um, so the wall was part of it, and uh, and that was really cool. People like that. And then the other part of it, the top secret more part of it, was the uh, phone booth of the future, if, if you which, will. Uh, which made it to Wired, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, which made it to Wired Magazine. So if you uh, watched any coverage of CES or read anything about CES this year, you probably heard a lot of buzz about Samsung's uh, transparent panels, um, which is something that we were able to use because uh, we're, we're friends of Samsung because we own way too many displays. <laughs> uh, so what that is, is it's, it's basically a phone booth. It's a, a TARDIS, if you will. Uh, Thank you. That's what I call it the entire time. After, after I saw <laughs> exactly this, what like, it looks like, I'm just like, "Wow, you made the TARDIS." Yeah, and there was actually um, there were like achievements to be unlocked with the live scribe thing, and one of the achievements was to go inside the. Uh, we called it the bit booth. Nobody else called it the bit booth. That was just our name for it. it. Was to go inside the bit booth and find the thing you're supposed to tap with your pen, and if you found that thing, it would turn the booth into a TARDIS. It's like full graphics. And then it would make the sonic screwdriver noise inside the booth. Nice, nice. People were pretty into. But so the way the bit booth worked is, you would open the door, you go inside, and the if I, if I can uh, construct this in your head. So if you're looking at it as, as a quarter view with the door to your right, there's two transparent panels on your right and two transparent panels on your left with the bottom panel just like a blacked out piece of plastic. And we have the picture up here. I, I believe this is Roy in this picture inside the booth. Right. Yeah, he's inside the booth. So, uh, and then, so inside the booth, you're looking at the inside walls. There's three trans, not transparent, three regular LCDs, um, top to bottom on your facing walls. And if you were on the outside of the bit booth, on the opposite side, there's three more regular LCDs. So you have a total of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve regular LCDs and four transparent LCDs. And so um, the transparent LCDs, they're, because they require an incredible amount of backlight, because if you know anything about LCDs, you kind of get the idea that a transparent LCD is really a normal LCD with a super high pixel quality and no backlight behind it. So if you turn these things on in a dark room, you will see nothing. So I pumped like 8,000 lumens worth of light or something like that into this phone booth so anybody on the outside can see what's happening on the inside. But if you're on the inside, they just look like mirrors. So... You walk inside, and so, for instance, like when Roy was in there, the moment that he picked up the phone, we have a graphic, uh, and Maya developed all the software to run the bit booth, but we made all the computery, logistical display stuff work. Um, so he picks up the phone, and you'll see a graphic rise on the outside. It makes it look like the bit booth is filling up with, like, Coke. That's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, not a huge fan of, of the Pepsi product, but... Uh, 
Now you're allowed to disclose that. Now I'm allowed to disclose that. <laughs> After the fact. <laughs> Huge Mountain Dew fan. I'll put that out there. Um, oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And PepsiCo owns everything. I, Did it, you know that? The, while I'm looking at the stuff flipping on the board, I'm like, rice aroni Seriously? Yeah, um, yeah. rice aroni uh, like Quaker Oats. That's all PepsiCo. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah. So, you go inside the phone booth, and you pick up the phone because the phone starts ringing the moment you open the door. So, you pick up the phone, and there's a voice inside the phone that says, hey... Uh, welcome to the Zeitgeist phone booth thing. Uh, this is a prototype. Pepsi is trying to do cool new stuff with technology, and this is one of those things. Uh, we're going to ask you a few questions and try and collect a little bit of data. So then it would give you, it would ask you a few questions that you would answer using the rotary dial on the phone that would say like, uh, you know, tell us how many people are in the booth with you right now. And so you would answer like, you know, one through nine, and you can fit like nine people inside the booth. It's a four by four by like nine feet tall. So now, was this was there somebody actually on the other line? Because I thought I heard you say something about somebody hiding in a hole somewhere. Uh, well, we were all hiding in a hole somewhere. <laughs> if uh, if you find pictures of the space, you'll see the big whiteboard. Behind that whiteboard was uh, a crew of usually like four people at all times, but up to like 15 people. Okay. I think we're coming from a different angle here then. Yeah. You're looking at like okay. opposite view there. Uh, right. I know on one of my photos, if you look at my Flickr, you'll see the whiteboard. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I saw some whiteboard kind of stuff on, um, on the video. I'll yeah. See, yeah. I'll see if I can, what I can find here for you. Well, that's, so back there we had, you know, Mac pro towers and stuff like that. So we could render out some Photoshop work real quick. Yeah. Um, oh, so, then, so it would ask you those questions, and then, so if you're not the only person in there, the audio on the phone transfers to a speaker, and then we can talk to everybody in the booth at once, and then we say, okay, cool, we're now going to, uh, do you want to know something about, uh, ask you a question about yada yada, or do you want us to ask you a question about this other thing? You dial like seven or eight, dial question, graphics come up on the touch screens that we have inside the phone booth, and like one of the questions is, uh, imagine it's the year 2022. We want you to tell us all of the awesome things that you've accomplished in the last 10 years. You have a minute to answer the question. So you would answer this question, and we take that data, and that data gets aggregated like everything else. So what Pepsi's big idea in this central station thing was to take small points of data and aggregate them into other media streams, such as the bit booth and the video wall, and use that shared information to create solutions to big ideas. So the other part of this and sort of the main part of this was this little unconference idea they had going on where we had people speaking at the at those whiteboards that you just had up. We had uh, Gary Vaynerchuk was there. Nice. Um, the CEO of Hootsuite was there. Uh, one of the founders of MakerBot was there. Uh, a bunch of other people. Uh, and basically just sort of having like spin-off conversations about, you know, these are problems that we're facing in the world today and getting everybody involved in trying to solve those problems. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was South by Southwest. And I went to a few cool parties. There was a Microsoft party that had a smoke, a fog machine and lasers and dance music. Um, hung out with the guys at, uh, two engineers at GitHub for a bit. And, uh, and, uh, it was, you know, it was cold and rainy in Austin the whole time. Really? It was really disappointing. So I, I went to Austin and then right after Austin, I had another show in San Diego where I did uh, a waterfall in front of an 80 inch monitor. And so I packed shorts and like t-shirts for both of these jobs. And, uh, I ended up wearing like long sleeve shirts and I didn't get to wear shorts at all until the day I came back to Pittsburgh <laughs> where it was like 70 and sunny. Welcome yeah. back. <laughs> right. This is ridiculous. And Yay. so now I'm going to, I'm going to Chicago, uh, tomorrow morning and, and the weather's snow. supposed to be like 80 degrees. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's totally insane. It's completely shaken your entire perspective of, of weather. Hey, while you were uh, telling us about the phone booth, Chachi did come in. What Chachi? are you talking about? Hey. I was here the whole time. I Chachi heard your entire <laughs> conversation. I was here the whole time. Welcome back from uh, your, your monster trips, Rob. Thanks. I, too, took a work trip. Yes, you did. It wasn't as fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i wish i were kidding but no it was uh i was gone for two and a half days i worked 32 and a half hours sounds about right yeah i don't want to do that again <laughs> i probably will but hello oh yes i made it i'm here you didn't even make a tardis in that time what's that you didn't even make a tardis i know 
Yeah, so, I'll, I'll tell you fun. what, a lot of people look at like the stuff in trade shows, like the cool video wall stuff or whatever. Let me fix my camera there. <laughs> and, um, and they assume that like me as the computer guy, like, you know, I just roll in casually and stay at a hotel and then <laughs> hang out on my laptop in the background. You do what you do it all magically and like, yeah, an like hour it, and a half. And I'll, I'll tell you, we started, uh, my my like horrible run of work started on probably January 30th and then the moment we got back from New Year's break was the last day that I had a day off and we've been crunching non-stop since then mostly 12 to 16 hour days and then South by Southwest didn't actually start until the 8th or the 9th we came in on the 5th and on the 5th 6th, 7th, and 8th, those were all 15-hour days for us. And then the 9th, 10th, and 11th were like 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. for exhibiting, and then afterwards I had to go, you know, get my drink on, so I didn't exactly <laughs> go to sleep until 2 a.m. But, uh, but it's fun work for you, right? I mean, I mean, it really sounds like, yeah. it, it, this is like, th this really sounds like you, you've met your calling. Yeah, this it is it is totally fun. And I mean, I wouldn't be happily putting in these 15-hour days if I really hated my job. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to say it's all puppies and rainbows. There are a lot of times where things <laughs> just really suck. Oh, puppies and Especially rainbows. Especially when somebody else is providing content or something like that. Mm. Like that, you know, I've certainly had jobs where you're just like I do not want to be here right now. I just want to go to sleep. I like I just hate everything right now and people can get real punchy and real angry real quick because you're, you're not sleeping at all and you're, everybody's working as, as hard as they can. But what happens is, you know, you get this idea in your head of what it's going to be like and you've seen this thing set up in your studio for a while, but then you get it set up. And the really nice thing about South by Southwest is that most of the shows we do, nobody has a clue about the tech that we're doing because they don't care. Like it's, you know, we do a lot of pharmaceutical conventions, stuff like that. And then you go to South by Southwest and people would walk into our booth and they're like, oh, wow, this thing is so cool. People are looking at it and trying to figure it out. And uh, and you, like, happen to be in earshot, and they see, like, I've got my big fancy Pepsi badge. And they're like, do you know who made this? And I'm like, yeah, me. <laughs> 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 What's up? I'm that guy. Whoa, and they're I like, mean... oh, my God. And they're like, I bet you have a team of, like, 20 people. I'm like, no, there's, like, four of us, actually. Well, we were, it's we a were... different audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a totally different audience. And it also meant we got to have a lot of really cool conversations and we got to get in touch with a lot of really cool people like you know, Make Magazine and people like that and get to get into Wired. It's all very cool and it's really awesome to see it when people appreciate your work. And even in the pharma stuff, like every once in a while you really hit something where people like stop and stare at it. And like, wow, that is really cool. Nice. Nice. Excellent, excellent. And, and you you're you're not you're not done. You're going to Chicago, so you have another uh couple uh, you have another one of these to to get through. Yeah, I have, I have one more to get through. Luckily, I've done this one before, but, uh, you know, as always, the content arrives the last minute before every, <laughs> after typical, everything is chipped. Typical, typical client work. You know how that is. Uh, so so. I, have a, I have a messenger bag on my dining room table with a couple Mac minis in it that I have to finish working on tonight before I fly out tomorrow. Nice. So even though, like, when did I get in? I got in on uh, the 18th, right? And Sunday. then I had... Sunday. I got in Sunday, and then yesterday I was at the studio for a little bit, and then today I had to go to the studio for a little bit, and I'll be working at home. So really, I'm not going to get a single day off until maybe the 28th. So um, we, we, you, you mentioned that uh, this was something you'd want to go back to. Now, I know a lot of a lot of the stuff I listen to are a bunch of people that said, I'm not going to South by Southwest. It's not worth going back to again. It's gotten too big. Now, this is your first experience. What's your take as a newbie? I would say I can completely understand where all of those people have, are coming from because I've, I've done that convention conference run where you're like, the first time you're like, oh, this is really cool. And you go back and you're like, oh, it doesn't, doesn't have the same shine. You know, you, you go through that honeymoon phase of everything you really go through. Um, but for me, it was, for me, the value was in the people who were there. I, I feel like if you're going to it, for like exclusively for all of the sessions and as like a learning experience i can see where it would really wear you thin mm -hmm. and if you try to do everything like it's impossible like i have i actually have all the stuff on the table here 
So I had a platinum ticket and I had access to everything. Nice. Let's pull up my camera here so I can make sure I'm in. So this is the interactive book. I got three bags, each bag for interactive music and film. This is the guide to all of the things you can do. Right? Jeez. Holy hell. <laughs> That's a lot That's of things. That is a it's lot a, of things. Like, it's a big Not conference. screwing around. Like the type isn't even that small. Holy right? crap. Well, it's, under, it's, under, understand, Shots, this, this thing goes from the 19th to the 18th between all the different festivals. Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. Or, I'm sorry, the 9th to the 18th. So, yeah, the 9th I mean, to the 18th. Yeah, because, I mean, you have, I guess you have the music and then all the tech and... All yeah, the, and they uh, all happen in relatively film. different in films. films. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah I mean, film, they sort of overlap a little bit, but, like, let me, let me find the film listing, which they had to make the type even smaller. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, my God. How many theaters were they running concurrently there? Uh, well, the, it's basically they run uh, all separate uh, theaters throughout the um, throughout the city of Austin. Mm-hmm. They make it all within like walking distance. So some of the theaters were like projectors they had set up. In, so uh, basically, this thing just like takes over Austin for the week. Oh, absolutely, wow. absolutely. And they um, we had a graphic up on the wall. It was it was the total number of revenue that South by brings to Austin every year. It was something like $28 million or something. So of course it's going to get bigger. Everybody wants a piece of it. Yeah. And, and like I said, like for me, you know, I was walking down the hallway and, uh, because I'm a photographer, I guess I'm really good at recognizing people by like the back (laughs) of their head. Like I'm terrible with names. I will never remember what your name is, but I can like, uh, there's a local blogger, uh, Tara McBride who runs stylish white female. That's her I, name. <laughs> I, no, I saw her last week, and I'm like, I know her. I know yeah. what she does. I've met her. I can't remember her name, so I didn't talk to her. Um, <laughs> so I had never spoken to her in person, and I saw her at an I Made It market, oh. and I recognized her by the back of her calves. Wow. <laughs> Just because I had seen so many pictures of her like showing oh, off her shoes. Yeah, that's oh. true. Wow. Um, so... So I'm walking down the hallway and I see this guy and I'm like, hey, I think I know that guy. <laughs> and then he kind of like, I walk past him a bit. I see his badge and it's totally the guy that I thought it was. I'm like, Shane? He's like, uh, Rob? Hey man, how's it going? This is a guy that I started following on Tumblr like two, three years ago. And he runs like a public, uh, he's a social media marketing guy for Austin's um, PBS station. Oh, nice. Wow. And I just like bumped into him. And so many people, it was an opportunity to talk to so many people who I know and really respect for the things that they do online. And I was able to just bump into and hang out with them, like talking to the guys who are super smart engineers at GitHub and them talking to me about the tech I do and saying like, wow, we'd really like you to have, have you like come by our office and, you know, nice. maybe set some of that stuff up. Nice. And it, it's just like a fantastic opportunity just to talk to people. So if you... If you go to South by for an educational experience, it's going to take a lot of planning for that to work out every year. And if you go to South by with a very low tolerance for a partying crowd, it's going to suck. <laughs> but if you go there like with kind of a, I'm going to do whatever comes, I'm going to try and meet up with a few people and hang out and have a good time. And like, I'm not going to be totally bummed if I don't see everything. I think that's the best approach to it. And that's exactly why I'm like, even if I do not get paid to go back to South by next year, I'm going to make a very earnest attempt at going back for interactive next year. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Um, well, cool. Cool. I, I, you know, it's one of those that's been on my, on my bucket list to get to myself. So, uh, so, yeah, I feel like Dan Benjamin's approach is pretty correct, which is he tells people that South by is something that you need to go to at least once mm-hmm. and then never go to ever again. <laughs> Um, but I think it's also, you need to go to at least once to kind of feel it out because nobody can tell you what South by is. It's intangible. It is really like for how many different aspects there are to it. Mm-hmm. Nobody can sculpt what South by is. It is a monster all in its own. Yeah. And even by design, it looks like it's for people with different experiences and different walks and all just kind of meshing together. And it's, it's the, it, and everybody says it's, it's, it's not the, the conference itself. If you just go hang out in Austin for the weekend, you know, you will run into a bunch of interesting people. Yeah. I mean, I have so. plenty of friends who are in the interactive industry who did not buy a ticket and they still had an amazing time just because everybody was there. There's meetups, yeah. there's hangouts. There's parties going on where, and it's not like party like, hey, bro, let's play beer pong. It's meetups <laughs> like, hey, let's get 
you know, let's get completely drunk and talk about wireframes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know about you guys, but that's a good time for me. <laughs> it's a super geeky party. Uh, it sounds like exactly what we it would really, do. I, I went to tech karaoke and watched a bunch of drunk nerds get up on stage and sing their heart out, like, really impressively. Like, that's why I love South. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, well, maybe next year, maybe we'll have an awesome cast endeavor down there uh, if we get things going around here. So, uh, well, in the meantime, we have Chilla here in studio. He brought a new shiny with him, so uh, you're, you're the. This is the first time I've seen it in person. I didn't even look you, at this. Did you want to hear? I'll, can I, can, I don't I'll like you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? Sadly enough, one of the most impressive apps is the App Store app. <laughs> yeah, what? I it's, played it, with I mean, one yesterday. Very clear. He's he's not lying. Hold on, hold on. I got my. <laughs> got to wait for everything to update for the display again. Hold on, I got my OG uh, uh, iPad One. He's go right next to it. Completely now, right. Now, what should I should I bring up the App Store on both of these? <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, first, this is way more is responsive super. than mine is. Um, I hope so, since it has four times the core as mine. Where's your App Store at? Um, lifestyle on the second. Oh, there it is. There you Found go. It. So we got, wow, that is, <laughs> I didn't even open it yet. I'm already impressed. So, um, wow. Now I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't, if, if I was an iPad two owner, which I am, <laughs> but I wouldn't, you, you if I was any other iPad two owner, I would not purchase probably this device now i'm an ipad hey. one owner now if i was an ipad one owner i would i would run out and get it Hold on, my, my I, i'm still loading the app store i would also i was talking to um somebody on twitter yesterday who mentioned i, I mentioned something about using styluses on ipad and they were talking about the ipad 3 and i said well judging by like what i would assume you would use it for if you are getting if it's sort of like you're not hugely into tech. If you're not Chilla, if you're not me, <laughs> then what the, one of the smarter moves you could probably make realistically, you'd be totally okay with getting an iPad 2 now if you yeah. want to save yourself a couple bucks. If, yeah. if the money makes off. Yeah. 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 I, Because really, it. like, if you're browsing the internet, playing a couple games, you know, drawing some pictures, sort it's totally... <laughs> I, I, if you if you really want to squeeze all the power out of it, then yeah, then yes. Yeah. Yeah. But really, compare the iPad to to the iPad if we want to get our our taxonomy correct here. Um, then it is you know it has a bigger battery, a nicer screen, and Wait, quad core capacity. I can't tell. Yeah, it's I can't tell. Unless it's are, side by side. <laughs> I I want to point out that at this point, um, as of today, mm -hmm. I've probably taught not. I, and you're going to laugh at me when I say this, but I've probably touched as many of these as a uh, small, hard-to-find Apple Store employee. Wait, you've been, you've been dealing with iPad 3s? Yeah. Oh, everybody came in with them, like, on Monday, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how many times I've had to sit there and grimace as I set up an iPad 3 <laughs> because an attorney rushed out and got it just so he could put corporate email on it? Wow, I keep forgetting that you're completely affected by this. Well, and I think this is the one time that Apple actually tried to do their best to keep up with demand. Uh -huh. Instead of instead of creating the long line, they're they're doing the pre orders. And you can go out to the store. I mean, I heard I heard many stores throughout the weekend that they were they were gonna they were people were claiming on Monday morning that, you know, it didn't do real well because they were still on the shelves. And then by Monday afternoon. <laughs> by the way, by the way, we sold three million of these. Yes. Yeah. What did they say? I, I I heard a figure today where it took them three months to sell three million of these for the first one. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think it's it about right. It took the weekend. Which is so silly, considering it, that we just told everybody that you don't need to buy one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, here Amazon Kindle, the the, the biggest competitor, mm -hmm. sold six million of their devices so far. Yeah. Okay. So far, <laughs> so far, so far. I, but but so, something like that. I mean, I mean, so, something like the Kindle Fire. It doesn't have the pedigree of you know. It doesn't have people that are stepping up through. I mean, you're starting to get come into that perfect storm now, where you have people with iPad ones. They were waiting maybe another generation. They're up on it. You have the crazy people. Sorry, Chilla. That's okay. That had the iPad too, and they're just gonna get the new one and and you know recycle or whatever gazelle whatever give it to a relative that that ipad too and then you have all the people that have been waiting this long 
And, you know, I, I think you're, you're seeing that with the iPhones at that certain point. You know, everybody's like, oh, I have 4S. There wasn't really much going on. That was better than the 4. Not a lot of people are going for it. Record numbers for everybody. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think I think they, they're just on this. Um, they're, they're just on this this momentum. And it's not going to stop anytime soon unless they pull a Netflix at this point. Wait, and, and I'm interested to see where tech goes with this, because I think the tablet could make a run for replacing a lot of people's laptops, especially yeah. in the home. Yes. I mean, yes. I especially rarely that go powerful. over. I rarely go over to my computer unless I want to launch Photoshop or mm -hmm. I want to mess around with a movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm on my tablet all the time. And I think with this device, I mean, I'm not seeing and maybe it's just because the iPad 2 was is a year old. I'm seeing amazing battery life in the first couple of days mm -hmm. with doing whatever I want and still having Cause a it, yeah, huge amount of battery life at the end of the That's day. one thing I've loved about the iPad is it never felt like I was really like, okay, I did something for a while. There goes my entire battery like it does with the phone, of course. Because like, mm -hmm. we've all experienced that with any, any smartphone. Um, but it, this and this thing, I guess, has got twice the size of a battery. Mm -hmm. It needs it for the four cores. Um, but I think it also needs it for the... 4G LTE. <laughs> probably, probably. Which, getting the Wi-Fi device, which, I think that's where I'm seeing better battery life. Mm -hmm. And then they're claiming 10 hours. I, I I, haven't been able to sit down for 10 hours straight <laughs> and just mess around. But, I mean, what I don't know. What, what are you laughing about? The fact that you haven't been able to sit down for 10 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will say, I, um, I've never... In the same, like, you've never been able to sit down for 10 hours straight. <clears throat> it's not usual that anybody with an iPad has, like, 10 hours. Yeah. Of what yeah. I yeah. would like to think, at least. Maybe I'm completely wrong and I have more reason to be disappointed in you, you know, You know, actually, as far as the 10 hours thing, you know what my iPad does most of the time? It's sitting there playing some Hulu or video or podcast beside yeah. my computer I'm working at. It's my right. other screen. It's my television so, in, the, in the office. So I am sitting there. Although half the time I see it go down like halfway and I'll plug it in for a while. But, so but it's, I can, it's hours before you do I, that, doing video. I can tell you that the, the thing that I went to San Diego for, and I cannot tell you what it was, <laughs> but I can tell you that it involved a fleet of 34 iPads. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> Did they have like little wings on them or something? Right? They kind of quadcopters. You know? They just floated around. <laughs> um I'm working on that. Uh, <laughs> wow. But uh, there were there were card readers. So, you know, you go to a conference or whatever, you get your little mag swipey badge. And you, each booth you go to, they want to swipe your badge so they can collect your lead data so they can use that data to send you emails and hopefully make money. So we had uh, this conference in particular, uh, expected attendance of 30,000 people. And... At the end of the first day, we had 10,700 people come through our booth. Uh, and our booth was 100 feet by 100 feet. And there were uh, eight iPads that were being employed as card swipers. So you can imagine how many swipes each one of those iPads took. And the show ran from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. So uh, I'm having a brain dead moment. Seven hours. <laughs> and uh, But seven hours of constant usage. And at the end of the day, the worst battery on all of those iPads was like 23%. Can't beat that. Yeah. Doesn't get much better than that. Hey. Yeah, that's constant usage. And it had to power up a bad reader. So extra draw on top of like full brightness screen on all the time. No lock. Wow. So I guess the other real question is, uh, how well is the LTE doing on these things? Because there was an interesting article that came out on The Verge over the week uh, by uh, Josh. No, it was by Sean Holster, but Josh, what's his face is up there. Uh, the new iPad is a beautiful reminder of how stupid data plans are. Mm. Well, and I agree with that. I mean, if, if you're going to bill me and I'm going to pay for, for my whatever plan I have, whether it's five gig, three gig, one gig, heck, bond, oh, who is it? Net zeros, they're doing, they're doing <laughs> 200 megabytes free. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, but if I'm paying for it, why can't I do whatever I want with it? I yeah. understand. Don't let me steal software and or or, or stream illegal movies. Well, or in whatever. this case, it, uh, as the picture FaceTime. demonstrates, it's FaceTime. You still can't connect on LTE. It's not a speed problem at this point. Wait, and it, it can't be. And I'm interested to see how because they offer jailbreak. I mean, jailbreaks 
you can get around it. You can do an mm-hmm. unrestrictor. You can still Skype. Yeah, you can still, you can still Skype, Skype. So what's what is the big deal? What's it, the big difference? Or, or I can get a wi- uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and do this. Right. There's nothing stopping me, and, and I have a Verizon high spot, uh, 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 you know, spot, and uh, over three G, I can hook up uh, like my iPhone or something, and and it, it's Wi-Fi. It, it you know, it's fine. So it's capable. They just don't want everybody to have the ease, it seems. And actually, uh, one of the things I was listening to, they said they <laughs> they talked to a rep at the store, and they're like, well, we have these other tablets that you can do a similar function on. So you think it might be a deal they have It is just the out. iPad, because they know, because three deal. million iPads went out went out the door, mm. and that's three million people that could be, you know, the, okay, I, you know, ideally, you know, portion of those are AT&T, portion of those are Verizon, but that's like, Almost a million people, probably for each one, uh, that could potentially be taxing your system, and uh, and nobody's ready for it. I, I'm having. I don't. I don't buy it. I, I, I could see it being more is exclusivity. I could. I don't see. I. I don't see where at the point where I'm going to be walking down the street, and I'm going to be facetiming with someone. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to make a phone call either. I'm going to text you. <laughs> but then even on this, um, you know, and I thought about something else. You know, how we were all like happy about iMessage. Mm-hmm. And, and I sent a lot of pictures to my wife. And I realized those pictures, typically we have a, we, we have a family plan at like $30 a month, as many SMS and MMSs as we want. So now my pictures are going over my data plan. So now I'm taxing my data plan. So it, it's like, yeah, you don't have Texas. Maybe, maybe you can get rid of your text plan. But if you don't. It, it, it kind of doesn't yeah. work for you if you're a big on the person. on the opposite end of that. Something that I realized recently, I have a um, a friend in Canada who I've been talking to pretty much exclusively via like Facebook or whatever mm-hmm. because you know texting or MMSing to international countries is expensive. Yeah, and then eventually she's like, "Well, wait a minute, you have an iPhone, don't you?" I was like, "Well, yeah." She's like, "Well, anything will do would be an iMessage." I'm like, oh my god, you're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly why, I, I don't know if I talked about it on here, but that's exactly why we got uh, iPhones for our, our in-laws, because their house is in a dead spot where maybe if you have Verizon, you can get some service. So we got them the three Gs that were free, and uh, now they can text over their Wi-Fi with each other, with us. They, they, they have text messaging with anybody else with an iPhone, which is basically anybody they'd be talking to anyways that has an iPhone. So, well, And it's confusing to me, too. Why? Okay, so if I go with the... AT and T, I can't. I can't make my iPad a hotspot. That's weird but if too. If I'm a Verizon customer, I can. Were there high spots with? Were there hot spots with uh, iPad twos? No. Then they're yeah. never. This no. is the first time there's this been a the hotspot. First spot. time there's been a hotspot. That's weird. But what? if I'm carrying this, what am I using a hotspot for? <laughs> am I carrying this with my laptop and my phone? That's also a hotspot. And I, and I might as well go out and get another hotspot just to carry around a hotspot. <laughs> then you get to the zero <laughs> hotspot, and then you're all, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, where do you draw the line? Because I can I, see. I, I, go ahead, this Rob. Is, this is one of those things where, like, I want to have faith in humanity, but I don't. <laughs> um, because, so, I mean, well, personally, I'm one of those people who carries all of those things, but I'm also, like, I was making jokes on Twitter because I had to have like five iPads in my carry on, which is hilarious. And if, if you are curious, <laughs> there is no limit to the amount of iPads you can carry, but you will have to take the box out of your carry on as you like you take your laptop out. You have to take your iPads oh, out. Oh, well. man. In separate bins? Not each one in separate bins. They oh, seem to okay. be okay with one iPad box with five iPads in it. <laughs> Wait, and, and I ran into some problems going through the airports with with. I had two iPads with me. Some airports, and this thing, it, TSA pisses me off more than anything else. Because in Pittsburgh, you don't have to take your iPad out of your bag. In Virginia, you do. But you right, also and on the TSA <laughs> website, it says that you shouldn't have to. Right. So where, where, do they just make up the rules as you go along? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. They pretty got, much. But, they uh, probably. I mean, so they, when I was at South by Southwest, like, the funny thing was, you would see people sitting on the floor in circles, and... Like, you'd see a crowd of, like, seven people talking to each other. And on the floor in front of them, each one of them would have their iPhone, their iPad, and their MacBook. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. I guess I, so it, it happens. People I got to say, though, that that is kind of how I work, though. 
uh, because it is. But you know, then again, I'm doing video. Maybe mm-hmm. that's the big difference. But or 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 I have some other task. And like I said, I'll have I'll have the laptop in front of me. I'll have the iPad here. Maybe I have you know I'm working here on Final Cut, so it's taking up a lot of processes. Because this is an older MacBook. Uh, so then I have this up here. So if email comes in or if I want to keep an eye on Twitter or for a client or something, and then I might have my phone over here playing a video or, you know, or, or some combination of all of the above. Or if I'm in my office, I even have a fourth screen. But that's that's me being insane. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, until until this trip, I didn't really just because I wasn't spending so much time in the air. And I was so busy with South by Southwest that usually my game plan when I go to a show is like we go we spend some time setting up we break for the day we spend some more time the next day and like in the interim there when we're not like getting food or going out drinking i hang out at the hotel and i figure out how to like hack the hotel wi-fi so we don't have to pay for it and i i didn't have the opportunity to do that i didn't even have the opportunity to like undress myself before i went to sleep (laughs) so my laptop battery was chronically dead and a lot of the times I'm like, I just need to send an email and I need to type something long out or browse something like media intensive. And I had the, the control panel for that video wall was partially functional in an iPad. So I could like wander out into the space instead of hanging out in my hole and control it. And through all of that happening and the battery life of my iPad, I ended up using my iPad more and more as my main computer at South by Southwest. And it's sort of like carried through since then, just because battery life and all my stuff is there it's just so accessible exactly exactly yeah. is it is it the post pc era or is it the more screens era or is it i can't stay focused on one thing so i have eight <laughs> things in front of me and, and, you know, and the conversation has come up and maybe this can be a transition well windows 8 we talk about like your 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 windows side by side everything just went off in here um <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what happened we got a tweet or something um you know you're side by side like you're working on a document and you have a screen reference up it's going away with a new metro interface with with ipads with with tablets as they're as they're coming up so is the solution then going to be instead of multiple windows layering on each other we just have multiple screens acting as these different devices like i bring up the reference website while i'm typing the the document over here i mean is that kind of what we're coming into or is that just a i just bought too many devices problem or or in the uh because i got to play with a uh a windows tablet thingy from microsoft like whatever the latest one is on a (laughs) samsung tablet i don't know what the system was called i basically talked to them for three minutes so i could get some like stickers but uh, <laughs> but what they have is the you know we're all familiar with the sort of flipboard interface that they have in the latest version of windows mobile yeah and they have that on windows mobile tablet edition um but what they also have is if you use a, a mac or any linux based device you're used to the idea of having spaces or virtual desktops and they have that in a tablet And that's something that I feel is, I mean, you know, it took so long for multitasking to come to iOS because multitasking is a battery suck if you don't realize what it's actually doing. But at the same time, if I could uh, swipe between apps instead of having to like home button open, home button open, I think that would be a huge like sort of functionality, usability, multitasking game changer for the iOS tablet. But, But on the iPad, you can now swipe between apps. Can you? Yeah, four, yeah you, use four you've fingles. Been, you've, you've, four, four, four fingles. Four, four fingles. Four fingles. Now, you've been able have to you played Fingle? Fingle is an amazing <laughs> app. Just pointing that out. No, but if you have if you have a, if you have multiple apps open, yeah. and you yeah. four finger swipe on your device left which, or right, which is the same thing you do on on the trackpad on the trackpad. Yeah, and on the OS. Yeah. Yeah. Well, two things. First off, um, you didn't put it in the notes, so I did. <laughs> but the FAA is uh, actually looking to reprise the uh, device role on flights because oh, of the use and, of... And I apologize for that because I saw the link oh, added on. at us and then I lost it. Uh, you, you mean like they're thinking about taking it away? No, like uh, you, how you can't use yeah. they're, they're, tech they're, they're, on they're planes. They're taking another look yeah. at those roles to see if they have to change. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. So. Because they they've admitted to several news outlets that it's outdated. Well, that, well, here our our the company I work for we have four planes, so we have <laughs> I think six pilots. And guess guess what their flight plans on? 
Oh yeah, they're on. <laughs> they're oh right, because they have to turn it was... off during takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> there mean... was the thing recently where they said that uh, they're now permitting pilots to use iPads in the cockpit. Yeah. So how does that work? I I guess there's bigger chance for interference when you're sitting back in <laughs> in the back. I, 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 I don't get it. Right. Well, there was there was the there was a MythBusters episode a little while ago, a couple of years, a bunch of years ago, I guess. Wow. Oh, when I was in college, How about that. Um, <laughs> and everybody got sad. <laughs> uh, but they basically they tried to do a a MythBuster episode on you know the idea of what your cell phone actually does, and what they essentially proved in the episode is everything that everybody already knew, which is that it has no effect whatsoever. But because they have to cover their own um, behind, they were like, just because we said this does not mean that you should not listen to the pilot when he tells you to turn off your phone. Yes. <laughs> well, I heard somewhere, too, that it was somewhat, somewhere where they were saying that they were keeping it on because they had so many cu- customers that when they left their cell phone on, by the time they got off their flight, it was dead because it was searching for towers. Uh, so it was what? like a press thing. Okay. So so here, if you if you, I, and I've done it, yeah. You yeah. accidentally don't turn your phone off and you get on a flight. Yeah. And it's a three. Accidentally don't turn my phone off? <laughs> but You mean purposely yes. ignore them. Absolutely ignore <laughs> all the warnings that are presented before you as you're taking off. Yes. But you, you don't turn it off. I, the only thing that happens when you get off your flight is you have a phone <laughs> yeah, that will turn back on because it's now dead. Because it can't. I've, I've it, never had that problem. Uh, you never, you've never left the phone on or you've never had it die? I can tell you that for every flight I've taken in the last year and a half, I've left my phone on the whole time, and I've never had a dead phone as a result. You rule breaker. Oh, and also, uh, Chris wanted to know what your battery life is like playing Draw Something. I don't play Draw Something. I don't have an ID on it. I just started playing it, and it has very little effect on my battery life. Okay. Did you get the paid version, or did you get the ad version? Uh, I think I paid for it. Now, here, there was an article today saying that if you are using apps that have advertising in them... I saw that. It's, it's, like, it's like a battery it sock. Sense. She it uses sense, the... Uh, she has the pay version, okay. so... Now, here, I have noticed over the last couple of days, for some reason, my phone is dying at an extremely accelerated rate. Is it one of those free apps that you download every day at noon? No, because <laughs> I've even started to make sure I actually quit apps... And I don't know. I don't know. What I have noticed is, is if I leave the camera open, if I leave the camera app open in the background, mm-hmm. it seems like it's probably still powering to that camera then at that point. I, well, so. it's not multi because if you go if you wait over 10 minutes and go back into the app, it reopens the shutter. Huh. So I don't know if it's still using the GPS to do geolocate where see I'm mine at? always i have latitude on so mine's always kind of pinging to the gps i do pretty well by it like it, it's i hasn't i mean it, it, it's what i expect from an iphone but i think it's it's not pinging as much when it does that okay i like the stock myself anyways uh so yeah so that's I, all i got I, so I wanted to address, uh, since you're here, Chilla, and you're kind of in a similar situation, uh, Chachi, uh, we were talking about Windows 8 a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you heard that episode where he said that we're not going to see Windows 8 in big corporations anytime soon, oh, uh, presuming yeah, it comes out this fall. Listen, we're not going to... Uh, do, do you Hold think on. you see Windows 7 or Vista? In, in I don't know. No, we're, we're, <laughs> we're not going to see this Windows you're not gonna 8. See, you're going to see a... a and I, I don't want to get too technical, but you're going to see a domain policy come down to the machine that shuts Metro off. Yes. Okay, so you're right not going to see gonna be... this Windows 8. Now, what, now, what's weird is, is though, in Metro, when you when you hide the Metro interface and go to the desktop, you don't have a start button. <laughs> so that so, makes me think that you're going to have so yeah. a folder on your desktop that has so all of your shortcuts. Rob said to fix his audio. Oh, I, I, th- I think you're going to see some kind of folder or somebody's going to make a piece of software that everyone's going to be willing to spend 99 cents in the Microsoft store for. Right. That brings back the start button. Yeah. Because there has to be some way to menu. Because the start button is goes in the Metro. You can't disable Metro at that right. point. Right. So. Also, um, to answer your question, in my personal opinion... No. Businesses should not be BYOD. In I, any case. 
Every time I left my but effing it, desk today... Clear. Bring your own device. Right, that right. We, we talked about earlier. I, every time I left my desk today, Chilla, I had a different eye device on my chair when I got back. They were they were giving them to you? No, <laughs> to set up and return. They didn't even bother to call to make sure I was there today. <laughs> see, I see. I think BYOD is going to... And I sent you a thing on a new VMware technology. Uh, what was it? WSX. I could see it to the point where if you can virtualize apps enough to make a your device where it's it's less to set this up for me so it syncs or whatnot. Give them an app. They open that app. We opens, tried that. It doesn't work. <laughs> I, I but I think it. But here, I think you're going to get to the point where people are willing to bring and pay for their own devices. And as major corporations think, if they had to purchase. They didn't have to purchase anything right? From, from the hardware perspective. There's no more desktops on the desk. You bring whatever you want. You make you, you your, That's your device. No. No? No. <laughs> I, I kind of want to hit you right now. I, I think it would work. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound fun at all. I don't make enough for that. <laughs> You definitely won't go maybe, out of work. Then maybe well, yeah, I won't go out of work, but I'll be overworked and underpaid. Kind of like 90% of America. Well, now, now, see, what we've started to do is self-support. So we don't... The first thing you do when you get a call or help desk or whatnot is you get... Did you read the forms? <laughs> and if the person says no, so they, say, go they read, send go them a URL. And get back to me. Yeah, and you actually... The first place you have to post is in the forms, and then you're allowed to open a ticket. Oh, wow. <laughs> so... I mean, and that's for the masses. There's a top level of people that. I mean, that that's for somebody in a branch somewhere calling you up. Right. Okay. Okay. But and I mean, gotta, like, like their manager at least should have read that stuff. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I could see a little more self servicing, a little more. Well, be, we also have to point out that your company and my company are vastly different. For, yes. I mean, your company has. A huge, a very, very, very large uh, service base compared to mine. So, I mean, that plays into it as, as well. I mean, you have the ability to go tell half a million people to go read a forum. Right. I and, don't have that ability because I'm only I'm only servicing a few thousand. And, and I think it, it I think it it depends on where where you fit in in, in your corporate structure. I. I could see like we tout as out of the seventy five thousand people, probably twenty thousand of them would be eligible for BYOD. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not en masse, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but for for the for the technology workers, and for sales, I mean, our corporate laptop with encryption and everything else on it takes about seven minutes to boot. So. If I could bring my own device and it's instant on, mm -hmm. and then I just log into the network and launch a virtual app, I can now work immediately. And and to me, I think that's where, where you can really bridge the gap and keep people happy. Plus, I'm not carrying... I, I'm one of those people that I want to get less devices. Mm -hmm. So I'm not carrying a corporate laptop, my personal laptop... My iPad, my phone. It's another thing that's a chance to get lost. It's another yeah. thing that you have to carry on a plane. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, it, it, it's, it's just another batch of troubles. So, um, I want to touch on one last story, and we'll get out of here. No. No? Oh, I know. Wait, wait, just one last story, or you want more? Oh, I don't care. I was just, I haven't argued I was, I was with gonna, you. I was going to ask if anybody made an uncorking fee joke about the BYOD. <laughs> <laughs> There, we've talked about giving stipends. It's kind of the reverse of that. Yeah. You would you would get an extra X amount of money in your paycheck to mm -hmm. help cover the cost of bringing your own device. Which I'd like for restaurants to start doing that for me. <laughs> we'll, we'll <pay laughs> Here's five dollars. Thanks for bringing your own booze. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think one of those things that when the, the the Metro UI lends itself to, and the the Windows Phone lends itself to. Not that I'm running out to get one, but. The, the live tiles and how you scroll through the interface, and it kind of works on the iPhone. They, they, they gimmickly have it. Mm -hmm. The temperature's correct for weather. 
the calendar is the correct day. You could make the interface a little more, hey, I can bring up and just see from the icons what's going on. And Android does a good job of it with the, with the way they do their interface and widgets. I, I could see it catching on for younger generations. Mm -hmm. Which, it's actually funny, because I ran into someone to work today, and he asked me why AwesomeCast isn't on the Zoom market. I don't... How do I get on it? I don't know. <laughs> I feel I like I've say a lot before. of nasty things about Zoom. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's well, a good question. Because he has a Windows phone. Okay. And I, I guess it's time for us to start considering that. So I, I know, yeah, I, you know, I feel like we tried that before because I know I went and put us on the BlackBerry market. Okay. So <laughs> I, didn't even know there I don't was know if anybody else. wants to test that, but uh, if there's anybody out there, I, I, Chris, if you're out there with your BlackBerry, let, let us know because I, I guess there's a podcasting session. And I feel like I tried to put uh, all of our podcasts on the Zoom store like within the past year. Okay. Because I, I, it was like a, but you know what? We're screwed up. You can't find our, our Wrestle, Wrestling Mayhem Show app in the Google Play Store because uh, they messed up our name so so bad. So go wow. to the Amazon App Store and get that thing. <laughs> it's fine there, but I don't know if Wizard did it, if Google yeah. messed it up. I don't know what's going on. But I don't know if they're going to make me uh, repay for that if I go to the Amazon App Store. Why? Why? Well, because I bought it in the Google market. It should be the same thing. Mm, what the amazon no, app store no, oh, no that's no, too yeah, different Am amazon store yeah. is, is different yes yes and i like you but i don't want to repay for something i already paid for come on give me another 70 cents <laughs> no <laughs> well, and that's my argument for a lot of apps i mean as a, as a user of multiple tablets if i pay for docs to go on my ipad mm -hmm. why do i have to pay for it on my android device and then why do i have to pay it when they come out with some software for my my pc mm -hmm. or whatnot mm -hmm. i think there has so to be you, but, but all of that as a service well well look at you know i was really surprised this month uh apparently i think one of my cars expired or something and a lot of my services like dropbox and everything it was like hey you need to update your information evernote was one of those i logged in took a picture of my evernote app and you know i'm taking care of i'm taking pictures of my bills uh business cards stuff like that um and and, and dvd orders and stuff and, and it's like, hey, uh, your your thing's about to expire. Do you want to just pay for it here as an in-app purchase? So I dropped my five bucks a month, hit the button. There you go, right through the app store, and it's taken care. Of. See, that's nice. So that that was a nice surprise that popped up there. Now Dropbox didn't offer that, and it's it's something that that I had the same issue with this month. And um, there's another one. Oh, another one was a uh, uh, Backblaze, but they pop up a thing in iOS and say, hey. Hit the buy button and we'll take care of you. So, ooh, ooh, ooh! Are we going to talk about the story I submitted this week, <laughs> or no? What story is that? Go ahead, Shashi. No, and if that's the one What's, you were going to talk no, no, about, no, there was a different one. But I, I'd like to touch on that. We can go over. I don't oh, care. so, uh, SourceFed. If you're not watching that, you should. It's one of our favorite new video shows. It's by the hilarious. Way. <laughs> um, they do. It's a. Uh, well, hold on, let me bring it up. It's a really quick news show kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's uh, 20 minutes or less. It's five news stories uh, posted daily uh, that total 20 minutes or less. And there's a hot, funny blunt. Well, I mean, there's that. Uh, Joe uh, Beretta mm -hmm. from Bratz and Beretta. And a really funny fat guy with a beard. He's furry. Kind of <laughs> kind of reminds He's furry, kind of? He kind of reminds me of, a, of a, to hug him. A, a balding Chewbacca. <laughs> But uh, they they did a, they did a story covering the fact that uh, now because of the digital age that we're in, uh, people have started to include instructions as to what to do with their social media accounts when they die. Oh yeah, I mean that makes absolutely sense. In wills and yeah. leaving passwords, and they've even gone as far as leaving what they want their last message to be. Yeah, sure. Which means, basically, you have to set two executors to your estate. One to handle the tech stuff, and then one to handle everything else. So we all need an IT uh, uh, professional for when we die? Yes. Sorg? Yes. When I die, <laughs> when I die, you're to handle my, uh, you're to handle my tweets. Your what tweets, happens if your he dies Facebooks? first? If he dies first, then um, I know all of his passwords for everything, and it's on... <laughs> I want uh, I it's want all my social media streams backed up to a thumb drive and my thumb drive buried with me and then close all my accounts because keeping that stuff open so people can leave creepy messages is creepy. 
Oh, I was gonna completely weekend at Bernie uh, <laughs> Sor- Sorg's Twitter account. <laughs> there's a movie. There's what, a movie. What are you doing somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Or compose new tweet. Sorg is currently laying in his casket, stiff as a board. <laughs> Oh wow! Uh, you know, they're, they're, Random four square check ins. <laughs> Sorg's casket. <laughs> Sorg is mayor of the cemetery. And then, and, then, and, then, and then and then you start having fun with it. Like man, not how I expected it would be on this side. Um, you know. <laughs> wow. Abraham Lincoln completely has a hole in his head. It's not cool, and he doesn't like it if you look at it. Remember that movie Beetlejuice? Yes, it's kind of like that. Um, oh. I don't know, but it's a consideration because, uh, and and we're at the point where this has happened to a few people, right? So, I, it, what has happened in those instances, right? Like, I remember MySpaces being up for people that were, you know, involved in a you know a tragedy back home, you know, yeah, and, and it uh, I know into a really bad situation, right? Facebook hey. had employed a policy. Um, it was last year, or the year before, or something like that, because they didn't have anything to account for this sort of thing. And now mm-hmm. they have a policy in place where if you can provide, I think if you provide a death certificate, yes, Twitter does Twitter, the same. Twitter as well. Yeah. yeah, then they will give you control of that account, and you're allowed to close it or keep it open. And you can actually like, there's a thing in Facebook where if it go, if an account goes into that state, you can like mark the person as like deceased or whatever, and just lock it up. Wow. Um, one last thing I'll touch on real quick. Kevin Rose goes to Google. Speaking of dead people. Oh! <laughs> whoa! Whoa! Uh, hey, well, they, hey, oh, know, did, did anybody else play with Oink? Any? No. Yeah, for like two seconds like before two? I remembered that Kevin Rose's career was dead. <laughs> <laughs> did so, I mention dead? Yes. Uh, so, go on. So, so Oink closed like last week, I think. Everybody got a, got a, email and said hey you can download all your oink data nope didn't do that um i I posted like two things and realized the only person on my feed that did anything was kevin rose uh and and the (laughs) only um but then it came out uh last week that he is started on google yesterday so uh and apparently like most of the the milk he even looks dead he looks dead (laughs) He's always been a pasty nerd. Kind of How many, I mean, like, <laughs> if you've followed Kevin from his days at... Um, the Dark where, Tipper? At, at Screensavers? Yeah. yeah, exactly. If you followed him, like, there was a point where he had a couple good ideas. You know, he started Dig. Dig was super popular for a while. I have a Dig hoodie somewhere. And then, like, he left Dig and went down this horrible path of bad <laughs> ideas. where Which included, like, Oink. It included, like, three or four different social media sites. And none of them were successful. Not yeah. a single one of them. They all yeah. fell into that category of like the only person who's using it is the founder. Yeah, yeah. And like, I'm. But isn't know. this isn't this something that happens with uh, entrepreneurs a bit though? That I mean, and not every idea is going to be a hit. Like that. You know, Ideally, when you have five bad ideas in a row, Google <laughs> realizes they shouldn't hire you. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Wait, so you're I talking mean, about the company that's closing Wave. Oh, well, you got me there. (laughs) If anybody is the king of having five bad ideas in a row and keep on chugging, it would be Google, wouldn't it? So that I know of, I I don't think we know why he's there. He's there. Do they know why he's there? He's there because they had an extra desk and a couple million dollars to throw at him. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure he got a couple million dollars. He probably did. And the the funny thing is, he's a huge Apple fanboy. They gave him a pack of Twizzlers. what, What was that, Rob? He, Kevin Rose is a huge Apple fanboy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was tweeting about how he had to, how he's traded up to his Android and he's enjoying it. So, oh, uh, that is he is such a, sh- a shill for corporate. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> if somebody gave me a million dollars, I would probably switch too. That's probably what it would take to get me on Windows Phone right now. Um, oh geez. man, I just thought of a good tweet to send when you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the best overheard ever. Oh man, just thought the best thing to tweet from your account when you're dead. Oh man, no, I'm sorry. This is gonna be like guys. Dot dot dot. Um, it's dark in here. (laughs) Why am I buried? I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. (laughs) It'll just be from like every two hours or so. Yeah, his Twitter account will just say, "I'm not dead yet." (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. And the best part would be, 
I would even take a few days off to go sit at the cemetery to see if someone unburies you. <laughs> All right, this just got does weird. Does it say what he's going to do for Google? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Nobody has any idea. I don't know what he's going to do for Google. That's a good That's question. That's the secret. Could I he figured it out. Google Plus? I got it. I don't know. I figured it out. What's that? Google is going to open a tea bar. <laughs> <laughs> is gonna serve tea. And, that's the only thing he can do. And the rest of the oink team with along with him? Uh they will be the uh baristas and stock agents for this tea bars. <laughs> It'll be the most social Kevin tea Rose bar will ever. be the chief cultivator of tea. <laughs> and everyone else will just like clean dishes. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, Thank you you, you were you were a head developer? Yeah, there's uh, about a dozen cups in that sink that need washed. Get to it. Welcome, head developer of manager. what? Oh, oh, oink. Yeah, that was funny. Back to the dishes, pal. <laughs> but there was the oink noise. There was the. It made the oink noise. It hey, was. Uh, hey, you, <laughs> you. Hey, what did you do? Oh, you're an accountant. Yeah, here's five bucks. We need more milk. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wow. need a list of all of the horrible things he's done. <laughs> oh, we did pounce. Remember pounce? Pounce was going to be the next big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He invested in a lot of stuff, though. What happened? So, who who did plurk? We should probably find them and see what they're doing now. I, I did. He. I think he did declare plurk the next big thing as well. Huh. And I don't think he put any money in it. But, Let's uh, see who created wow. plurk. Plurk um, is still alive, you know. Yeah, but it's out there. I can't believe that hasn't died off. It's Somebody there. Thirty-seven percent of plurk's traffic comes from Taiwan. Wow. So it's like that one service for uh, Google that they never shut down. What was that called? Orkut? Yeah, Orkut. So this is it's still this hugely is, popular. So this is like Orkut. Orkut's like huge in Brazil. What the heck is Orkut? You never heard of Ur Orkut? It's a Google service. It's a Google service. <laughs> they bought it. But what does it do? It's a social network. It's a horrible, horrible, it's horrible social network. It's a really social unfriendly social network. So it's like worse than MySpace. I don't think it's as assaulting to the eyes as a... It's not full of CSS. Chill, chill to give you an idea, Orkut is still ranked 199 on Alexa. Well, here we go. Uh, um, let's see. You earned a badge. I, oh, wait. I'm on Orkut. <laughs> it's ranked the 126th top website in the world. They have badges. Uh, it I has 66 million active users worldwide. Mm -hmm. huh. mm -hmm. That's not too shabby. Uh... Oh, I can do themes, and there we go. Oh, <laughs> you can change the color. Uh, something called scraps. Um, there's nothing to see here. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can add applications. There's communities. I, I I have not played with this, but apparently I activated it out of curiosity one time. Oh no! And here we are. So um, it, it, it's like Google Plus Beta. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> is. It kind yeah. of is, but not as sparse. There's, there's yeah. way more columns. The and while you're using it, somebody is constantly hitting you in the face with a frying pan. <laughs> the, uh, the head creator of, uh, well, one of the co-founders is named Alvin Woon. Woon? Yes, he's 30 oh, years old. And his, uh, his, his karma is 115.98. Uh, that beats the heck out of mine. I know. Well, what's his strong points? It's, it's like the horrible <laughs> stepchild of clout. And Google Plus. <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, they have uh, they have badges now. Yeah. Mm. Um, Wait, are we still talking about Plurk or Orchid? Uh, Plurk. Okay. Plurk. Okay. He's oh, on, on Plurk. Okay. He's on the Plurk tip. I'm on the Orchid tip. Uh, he has reached Plurk Nirvana. As a co-founder, I would think that he would automatically receive every badge. <laughs> like, I think I would just go in and program it for him. But, I mean... The guy only has a hundred thousand profile f views, um, and it's taken him um, four years to send six thousand plurks. So basically, even he's not using it. That exactly, much. he's on Twitter. Yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's verified. I can send him a private. Well, I can't because I don't. Oh, I'd hope he was verified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Sorry. I mean, he only has thirteen thousand fans. That's all of Plurk. Yes. <laughs> and uh, according to the Wikipedia page, Plurk is a rival to Twitter. Not if the uh, creator only has 13,000 yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's every fan on Plurk. He's, yes. like, he's like Tom on MySpace, who is now on Google Plus, by the way. 
Yes. 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 Have you yeah. friended Tom on Google Plus? No, I don't use. He's Google very talkative Plus. on there. He loves. I Google haven't Plus. used Google Plus in weeks. I've been I've been getting back into it. So I'm finding the people, and and I I uh I you just know what. Guy Kawasaki just put out a book about Google Plus. I'm I'm going to read. I'm, bl- I'm bringing Flirk back. You bring it back. I'm bringing it back. You're bringing it back. <laughs> bringing it back. Yeah, all you trendsender. I'm bringing Flirk back. <laughs> wow. I'm, in, <laughs> I'm the Justin Timberlin of uh, social media. Timberlin? Wait. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Timberlake. 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 Yeah, that one. Whatever. <laughs> Not the boot manufacturer. <laughs> I am the the Justin of uh, the Justin. What's his face? Of yeah, something. <laughs> of something or other. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm bringing I'm bringing it back. Yeah, you should hashtag everything with Plurk for the next week. I will <laughs> see what happens. See what happens. I swear, if I have to start going to Plurk to see what's going on, because there was that period where everybody we knew no, oh, no yeah. started going over to Plurk. We went to Plurk on Tuesdays we, for Lost. For Tuesdays for Lost. <laughs> that was it. Really? Yes. It was. <laughs> That was uh, 2008. That's what that was. That was some 2008 action there. It was. That was good. That was good. Back in the I remember because I first moved to Pittsburgh and everybody was talking about Plurk. And I'm like, okay. Right. <laughs> it was the uh, the heyday of Plurk. You know, what the you two months after it came out and then everyone was done. The well, icons were the greatest thing. What do you feel you're getting out of Google Plus that you can't get? Out, out of Plurk. Plurk. Hangouts. Out of Plurk. Hangouts. <laughs> if you can tell me one thing undeniably that works in Google Plus that I can't get anywhere else, it's Hangouts. Because I hang out a lot. You I, should really uh, pull up your fly if that's a problem. <laughs> you don't know if I'm wearing You can do Hangouts shot. in Plurk. What? You can do Hangouts in Plurk. You can do Hangouts in Plurk? It's, all it is is conversation just, feed. Uh, stay in there and make an animated <laughs> dance in bananas, and yep. there you go. Um, what about Microsoft Chat, okay? What? Comic <laughs> Chat? Ooh, Come on. Comic Chat? Oh, comic man. Chat. I wonder if I still have a Plurk account. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering, too. I don't want to have looks to... a lot different now. Oh, well, let's see. Um, no, no, seriously. Google Plus... Uh, I, I, I'm... Google Hangouts are the thing. Now, do you could could you see them taking that in its own, spinning it off on its own? No, because that I think you have the, that one builds on the other. Mm-hmm. The, the, it's built on top of Google Plus, so that's what's keeping it alive. There, there is a lot of good conversation there. I, I'm starting to find the little nooks and crannies of it where, like the oh, yeah. professionals, <laughs> for, yeah. like the professionals, like mm-hmm. I'm starting to find the conversations about like video editing and wirecast. And uh, and podcasting and stuff, and those are starting to get interesting. And that and that that you know the the you know so it's more of a tech. You get in there. It, it is more of a tech thing, or it is more of a niche thing, like finding a niche. Because okay. it's not a thing where you go find you know you friend all your friends that you know. Completely it's, it's finding on work right people. now. <laughs> <laughs> I had to restart my account, but my username was still available. What? <laughs> Uh, but no, I think I think um, there's I think I, I think it's gonna it on no tweet. <laughs> Wait a minute. So so to make it look like the timeline isn't empty, it yeah, just says it, Plurk Buddy everywhere. Yeah, it right. adds it adds uh, an auto messenger that oh, gives God. you statuses on uh, on uh, things they're doing. Thanks for all your support. Oh, I'm responding. <laughs> I like that. Uh, all right, all right. There. On that note, on that note, as we as we uh, bring back, oh, Plurk. I can't, I can't respond to the Plurk, buddy, because it doesn't pride it doesn't work in Chrome. <laughs> no, it <laughs> won't. Chachi, aside from bringing back Plurk, what do you have going on? Um, insert coin to begin dot com. Are you gonna start a Plurk for that? No, <laughs> no, this is personal. This is a personal thing. Yeah, this is a personal. Oh, Excellent. welcome to Plurk. What? Awesome, awesome. Can I BYOD to, to uh, insert coin begin? If you want to. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I, I'm not going to argue with that. Chilla, what do you got going on? Eh, not much. I'm buying a house. He's buying a Friday, house? Friday, close on the house and get to take you're over that place you didn't technology want, wise. You just didn't tell me <laughs> that you didn't want to tell anybody. Well, it was <laughs> more of a, Now you told everybody. Right. No, no, I've told everyone. But we're we're closing. It's not. We're not a month out. It's no, no. Yeah, it's, negotiation it's close could enough. fail. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Short of them not fixing a couple. So of things now you and, you have a fairly automated apartment. Now you have free reign. Oh. But now I have to move all that. Oh yeah. Oh. Like I, now it's like I now I realize why people don't install their own light switches when they rent an apartment. 
<laughs> and we had that conversation when you showed me that. Too. And it's not going to be bad. It'll take it'll take about an hour to get yes. most of the equipment out, so it won't be too bad. This is hilarious. <laughs> if I don't want a tweet, if I don't want my plurk to send to Twitter, I have to put a, a code in plurk. <laughs> how does it know your Twitter? I it signed up. No. I just want to prove to people that I'm actually trying to plurk. Is bring in plurk back. Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dancing banana. <laughs> oh, oh, man, they Rob. took away the banana. Rob, what's going on with you I here? I am not happy. <laughs> they took away the banana. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I Go am, ahead. I'm going to Chicago. It'll be my first time in Chicago. Excellent. So that'll be fun. Uh, do it a job, which will uh, hopefully let me sleep because I've done it a bunch of times before. Um, and, uh, and then my month of April, I'll actually, uh, here's a warning for anybody in Pittsburgh. If you have not seen the teeny Harris exhibit at the Carnegie museum of art, this coming week will be your last chance to see it mm. because I personally will be tearing it down on April 9th. Um, and it's kind of a big deal. So you should... Actually next two weekends then. Yeah. Next two weekends. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be open the week of uh, the second to the sixth but I can guarantee that I'll be tearing it down on the night. <laughs> but hopefully, the rest of the month of April, I will not have a lot to do. Ideally, I'll be focusing my brain power on doing ridiculous things like a um, an iPad uh, Zotrope, if you know what that means. Don't know. Okay. I Look wasn't listening. I'm too busy plurking. <laughs> um, and uh, maybe a uh, robotic desk lamp, something I'm working on. And a uh, also a robotic locker with snowmobile treads. These are all potential projects for the month of April. Wow. Wow. And there's a shot of the uh, Teeny Harris archive part over at the uh, Art Museum site. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, cool. go check that out. Excellent. Cool. Will you be on next week? Uh, let me look at my calendar. Hold on. Uh, next week... Uh, I will be coming back the 27th, which is next Tuesday, so I'm not sure what time my flight is. Okay. But I'm only coming in from Chicago, so maybe. All right, give me, give me, a, give me a heads up. We are, we are planning the ladies' day, I think we talked about before. We're uh, just going to have a bunch of ladies on. Can I just talk in a high voice the whole time? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> I can wear my fancy pink underwear. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we really hadn't, haven't had much for ladies on. And Missy's been in the studio. We've had Cindy on. And so, well, we, I mean, we have Chachi on every week. He's a lady. Right? Um, he's too, I'm gonna, <laughs> thankfully, I'm hurt he's you. Too, I was going to say, thankfully, he's too busy plurking to have heard that. So. No, I heard him. Oh, <laughs> I'm no. filling out my plurk profile so I can get some perks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been your awesome cast for this week. A fun week. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. Plurk me. Plurk, plurk, plurk uh, Chachi. Chachi, Chachi plurk. says on plurk. Ch Chachi says on plurk. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> RobJDC.com for all of his stuff. Chilla's at Chilla. I'm Sorgatron. Wherever you find me, just search it. I'm all over the place. Thanks for everybody in the chat room that's been uh, jumping in. Chachi, Chachi plurks for kids. No. Yes. No. Chachi plurks for kids. Bobby F. J. Town, Riz, Juggalo John. Uh, Chick Chris was in there. Rebellious Flaw. And uh, a bunch of other people. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, again, check us out. We're on uh, the Facebook, the Google Plus, a lot of conversation going on there. Tweet us at AwesomeCast uh, about things you think we should be talking about and everything. Uh, any comments, also hit us up at contact at AwesomeCast.com. Check out all the past episodes at AwesomeCast.com. Uh, and, uh, hey, subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm going to get that fixed here someday. Uh, Blip TV, iTunes, uh, BlackBerry World, apparently. Uh, and hopefully soon on the Zoom. So <laughs> go check us out all those places. And we're on your Roku box as well. I believe through the Blip TV channel. I know a lot of you listen to us on that. Uh, so I'm Sorg for Chilla Chachi and Rob. I'm plurking. <laughs> I'm, I'm downloading plurk to the iPad so I can plurk with you. Thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.
Okay. Um, wow. Can we start on time? Is that going to happen? I think that might happen. We're going to fucking do this. <laughs> Let me open oh, the wait, doc. Wait, I got an email. Is this important? No. Um, yeah. Oh, that's my garbage bags ordered today. <laughs> nice. I order everything on Amazon now. It's awesome. Because you, you have Prime? Yeah. So, you... Well, it's like, I'm like, like, I've needed recycling bags for the longest time. That's why I have a pile of shopping bags out there right now. Uh, and and I got every store I go to, I can't find them. So I'm like, dumbass, you have Amazon. Go fucking yeah. order them. You'll have them in two days. Just buy them. Yeah, just, just, just do it. Now, is stuff generally cheaper on there as well? Average-ish. Not I've like... found, because of the like incredible volume of things that I purchased for work through Amazon Prime, when you compare shipping, usually what happens is if you were to buy, like, say you're going to buy, I don't know, uh, 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 an AV adapter of some kind. If you were to buy it from some other random website, you're going to pay $5 for shipping on top of the retail price. Mm -hmm. And it, the average shipping time is going to be like five to seven days. You will pay like the price that you find for it on Amazon Prime, which includes two day shipping for free, is usually the, the, like the price you would pay elsewhere. But with Amazon Prime, you basically have a guaranteed delivery within two days. Yeah, I, you know, I, and, and that's the reason why I've ordered a couple of things instead of Monoprice on there but I usually yeah. get lesser quality stuff. So yeah. it's like, I need a cord or I need a good cord. But and can wait. Like there's a lady at work that she like started ordering. I order my fruit loops and I order yeah, my yeah, canned yeah. goods I, and I, I order. I think how, I don't think it's a lot cheaper. No, it's, it's never a ton cheaper, but it's no. usually, it's cheap enough that it's you're not. Right? Okay. So it's, it's not least like competitive. I went, it's not like I went to Sam's club and bought the big thing of it, you know, cheap. It's, I went to the local Walmart and they don't have a sale on it this week. Cheap, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. like, I don't know those prices as well. Missy has that database in her head of that because we'll go into Walmart and says, this is cheaper at Giant Eagle, this is cheaper at Dollar General, you know, kind of thing. So she's the person I, I like go to for that kind of stuff. But I, my, the role is starting to become, if I, if I need to go two boroughs away to get it <laughs> like to walmart if i can't go down to the dollar general or coons or the iga up the street to get the thing i need i'm start starting to see if it's on prime and i will just order it there i've ordered toilet paper man okay that is the greatest thing to get a giant box with paper in it yeah. it's <laughs> wasn't become that, wasn't that a merlin man sketch one week oh oh yeah it's so. like where, where it was like how useless is that that you're paying for a giant cardboard box with paper that you're just going to throw away. <laughs> but you don't have to go out and get it. I don't have to go get it. Yeah, it comes so to me. It's Amazon Prime for me has become like my Zappos because so I've got like the Zappos VIP account for free or whatever, which means I get free overnight shipping on everything both nice. ways. Nice. And um, basically, if I go to shop for a shoe and I can't find it on Zappos, I'm more likely to try and find something like that shoe on Zappos than go to another retailer. That's where they Just got because, that's yeah, I mean, that it's basically like their customer service is great. I know it's going to show up on time, and I know if it doesn't fit, it won't be a pain to get it back. Yeah, yeah. And even the couple of returns I've done with uh, Amazon, because I just got the wrong thing. The strap got the right wrong thing. It, was, uh, it wasn't that yeah. bad. Or, or they sent me the wrong thing. Even, like, I, I tried a uh, replacement in cartridge to try to save a couple bucks, and yeah. it was, like, the different shade of mm. anything else so i'm like this doesn't fucking work it was open i had two cartridges out trying it and they took it sent it back gave my money back i got with them like I, uh, a week. I ordered a, a fluorescent bulb from amazon through like one of their resellers but it was from an amazon warehouse and uh when i got it it was a cardboard box with an empty bottle of vitamin water inside <laughs> <laughs> and so i called up amazon i'm like hey so <laughs> This I ordered weird. a light bulb and I got an empty bottle of vitamin water. She's like, "You got a what?" <laughs> I'm like, "It's a, it's an empty bottle of." She mean, she's like, "You mean like the drink?" I'm like, "Yeah, like the like the drink vitamin water." And it's it's it wasn't even full. It's empty. <laughs> she was like, "Huh? Uh, well, this is gonna sound really dumb on my part, but it's kind of standard policy. Can you box up that bottle and send it back to us?" <laughs> She's um, like, I'm just going to need it for evidence. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's sure. She's like, your new bulb is already on the way. We're, we're just going to need that. Oh, that was box. that was the great thing, too, because uh, Missy ordered a couple things for me, uh, a couple headsets for me for Christmas. And we found out that 
only two of them came. And we had called, and they were like, yeah, we already have the other one to you, our bad. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, I had gone online uh, before she, like, in the minutes before she called, and I think I put an inquiry in about it. So I don't know if that was related or just independence independently said, okay, we noticed it's on its way. And yeah. it was just like a number thing. She ordered three or something, and, and that was yeah, it. Yeah, we shipped two. Hmm. Yeah. But, but now, Prime, you get, what, two-day shipping? Yeah. Yeah. See, what's what's weird? So I ordered a pair of headphones. They shipped on Sunday mm-hmm. from West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Estimated date is tomorrow. I feel like they purposely delayed. My Sometimes item. I've gotten stuff like next day. Oh like, yeah, like next once day. In a, once in a while, it'll show up. But only there is a pretty Prime local warehouse. Prime. Prime. Yeah, person. But that's my point is, is that I ordered it. It shipped on Sunday. Mm-hmm. From West Virginia. It depends on where you get it from, too, because I know a lot of my stuff doesn't come from Amazon. Okay. Necessarily, it's like one of the resellers. Yeah. So, I, by the way, I'm tacking this on the behind of the show. That's fine. Um, That's fine. But it's, I mean, it's also about, <laughs> this is such a nerdy conversation. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's also, it's about setting expectations, right? And making sure everybody gets what they want. So, yeah. yeah. It, it might be that, like, they can get you your stuff in a day. But there's a bunch of other stuff that has to go through the system, and they don't want you to think that everything that you order will come in a day yeah. when you yeah, buy two-day, because then when you buy two-day and it doesn't show up in a day, you file a complaint. But my point is is that FedEx picked it up. It's, it's, it, it's, in, it's in progress. It's left West Virginia on Sunday. Yeah. And it's, well, FedEx does actually do that in their in their processing facility. If they see UPS. that its expected due date is, yeah. is I th- I th- too I early. Was, I thought it was UPS. Now, FedEx, I know that I've talked to FedEx and I know that they do. Well, it. they did it for the iPads. Yeah, okay. they, they definitely did it for the iPads, but I've had them do it for a bunch of other stuff too. Where like yeah. we paid for a certain sort of shipping that said it was going to arrive on like this day, which was four days from now, and it it was like in the local processing facility within two days. And I was like, "It's within your city. Why isn't it delivered yet?" And they're like, "Oh, well, the system will automatically delay a package in the event of high volume." I'm like, oh, all right. When it was weird too, because with the iPad. My iPad came into Harrisburg, went to Indianapolis, Indiana, and then back to Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, how how did they decide to route it that way? Although I do enjoy, I, did, did yours did yours come straight from like Shanghai or something too? My iPhone 4S my iPhone, my iPhone did came direct. That was cool to watch because it, well, when it goes against, it seemed like it went against time zones, so it never stopped moving. Like it was, uh, mine was always in movement throughout, even the middle of the night, mm-hmm. everything. It was, it was, I mean, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool to be like, oh, it's in some Chinatown I can't pronounce. It's in, mine went to a, it's through in Alaska. I think, I think mine went through Alaska too. There's got to be, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyways, let's do a show. Yeah, we should probably do a show. Yay, <laughs> let's do the official show. <laughs>